So good evening Africans. I hope uh, you are doing fine where you are and if you're not doing fine, please do fine. So in today's video, I want us to talk about Germany and Africans love for Germany and also other European countries. So in a nutshell, we are going to talk about Africans moving to Europe to seek a better living. Living in Germany means you're living in a country where you're going to experience racism in all spheres of life. And when I say all spheres of life, I mean in church, in school, in university, at work, in sports clubs, and even on holiday. You remember that scandal that was on TV the other day, a few weeks ago, about people being on holiday and chanting all these racist songs. So that is the reality of Germany. And you know what? Over time, that does something to you. It starts affecting how you see yourself, it affects your sense of uh, sense of worth. It affects what you believe you can do or cannot do. And you start self-doubting. Those things just happen inevitably. And this is especially so. It's especially so if you're not in a community. Living in Germany, you have to be in a community. You have to be around people who look like you, who sound like you, who listen to you people who appreciate you, and people who can relate to the things that you're going through. That is how you remain strong and resilient in this country. A 37-year-old Cameroonian man was killed a few days ago by an Arab, specifically a Turkish man in Berlin. And the reason is going to blow your mind because we are humans and not chickens. You will agree with me that a few days ago, I came out here to plead with our brothers and sisters from African descent to be very, very careful because of the situation of Europe currently. You can see how the elections are going and the red extremist political party are actually having more ground. You can look in Germany, you can look at the recent France election. So, I said that we should be very careful to enter into any argument with anyone. And even if you're being insulted based on your skin, meaning a racist insult, you have to look at your surrounding very well before you join that person into an argument because these people they may be armed and at the end of the day they are mentally ill they'll go to some places and come out after a few years while the person's life is gone and gone our brother williams was killed because of a park plot which is a parking spot parking spots like parking spots the thing still blows my mind out there, and I really pray that William um, gets justice, like real justice, in as much as justice cannot bring him back. But I just pray that he gets justice because he left two kids behind. And my condolence to the Cameroonian um, society or the Cameroonian population or nationalities, and also to the family, I'm very sorry for your loss. Accept our condolences as Nigerians. I'm very sorry. And please, to everyone out there be very careful watch your back i will i won't stop saying this watch your back talk back when it's necessary make sure you have enough backup because once you're gone you are gone please be very careful and i hope so dearly that the german government help to give williams the justice he deserves thank you and see you in my next video bye so I was on the train today and I have to tell you this experience that I've had. I was sitting behind a German guy who was with his kid. The train was rather full and when it stopped at a particular station, some Indian family, a father and a mother, and I would assume their two children, went out of the train. Then the German guy told his kid something like, they are Indians. And the rest of the conversation I do not want to repeat here on this video. It's unfortunate. All I could think of was, oh my gosh, this father is teaching his kid how to be a racist. And I was thinking to myself, my gosh, I've been here a long time already, many years in Germany. And I'm thinking to myself, I've actually never experienced racism here in Germany. But then it dawned on me maybe not to my face <laughs> so of course it was not my place to say anything and obviously this german guy with his kid there poor kid didn't realize that there was an asian guy behind him who could hear the conversation so long story short acceptance people 
acceptance, peace. This, this has been a problem for Africa and Africans for a very, very long time. You know, we've been sold the narrative that Europe is the best place that life can work out for someone. People we've seen who have succeeded, and some of these people who have succeeded have managed to convince Africans to go to Europe at any by any means possible go to europe find a job marry a white person if possible live there and get citizenship that has always been strategy it has worked for so many people but i'm here to ask you a question look at my fingers i have five fingers five of them in one hand so this one hand is like the parents parents give birth to different children each child always has their own luck. We have this small finger, the middle, the ring, the thumb, and the index finger. If I tell you that this small finger, which is most despised, carries like 90% of the weight of the hand, you won't believe me, but scientifically, it has been proven to be true. You understand? If somebody went to Europe, somebody succeeded, doesn't mean everyone who goes to Europe will succeed. We've heard of cases, Africans being abused. We've heard of cases, Africans facing uh, racism, uh, being oppressed. We've heard so many things. The worst cases that I've, I have heard and you have heard, I know, uh, the deleting, the unaliving of uh, Africans in Europe. This, this is a video I want us to watch. It so how is the racism in Germany? Let's get into it. I'm Nantle, I'm South African, but I've been living in Germany for over 15 years. And as a black woman and an African immigrant, one of the most frequently asked questions I receive on a daily basis is how's the racism in Germany? And I've always avoided responding to this question publicly for several reasons. One of them being that, although this sounds like a very simple question, I believe that it deserves a nuanced conversation. Another reason I found it difficult to answer this question on social media is because I never know what the person who's asking it really wants to know. Do you want to know whether there is racism and it is as bad as you imagine, or there is racism but it's tolerable, or there's just no racism at all? Because how do we measure racism? But as I've become more active on TikTok and my account has been growing and my content is generally centered around my life in Europe, particularly in Germany, I thought it would be fair that I try to answer this question as truthfully and as genuinely as I possibly can. So are they racist in Germany? Yes, they are. Have I experienced racism in Germany? Yes, I have. Do I experience racism or discrimination daily or regularly in Germany? No, I don't. Do I, as a black person and as an African immigrant living in Germany, feel unsafe in Germany? No, I don't. I've lived here in Germany for almost 16 years, and in that entire time, I've experienced the violent, life-threatening type of racism only once. I used to work in a theater and on some days the show would end at around 11 p.m. So this one evening I was on my way home. It's around 11.30 p.m. and I'm in the city about to catch my bus home. And out of nowhere, this drunk man starts hurling racial insults at me. I was shook. I was scared because there was no one else around. So even if I did scream for help, nobody would have been able to help me. Thankfully, I was unharmed, he did not physically attack me, and I made it home safe. So that was the one time that I experienced what I would call life-threatening racism in Germany. What I sometimes do experience or observe are microaggressions. A lot of German drugstores and beauty stores do not stock foundation for women of color. One of my very first viral TikToks is of me trying to buy foundation in one of the biggest German beauty stores. At the time, Lupita Nyong'o was the brand ambassador for Lancome. I'm not sure if she still is. I walk into the store and I ask the sales assistant if they have a Lancome foundation for my skin tone. 
and she explicitly says to me they only have foundation for Europeans. She uttered this so nonchalantly that I doubt that she even realized what she was implying, which was that only white people are Europeans. This is despite there being Europeans of all ethnicities and all skin tones. There are so many black people who were born in Europe and who have been in Europe for multiple generations. Now, besides that, I've never been declined entrance to a venue, for example, a, a club, as I have been in South Africa. Um, I have never been declined dining in a restaurant and told that the restaurant is fully booked, even though there were empty tables, something I've also experienced in South Africa. Um, I've also never, I have been stopped by the police for speeding, but I've never been harassed by the police in Germany. I've also never been followed around in a shop uh, or treated in a suspicious manner. Now, this is not to say that these things do not happen in Germany. There have been numerous reports of police brutality towards black people and other people of color. Um, there have been people who have been declined entrance to clubs. There have been people who've said that they were treated with suspicion, whether it was at the airport or it was at uh, a shop. This is why I've always been skeptical of answering this question about racism in Germany, because there is a danger of sounding like I am invalidating other people's experiences or just being delusional. It sounds weird even just saying that the only racism I often experience or witness are microaggressions because microaggressions are still racism. And what is the right amount of racism? Like, how do you measure racism? What is too much racism? What is just enough racism? But because the question of racism has been asked so many times, my assumption as someone who has never been to Germany is that you want to know if as a black person you would be safe or you are most likely to be harmed in Germany. I cannot guarantee that if you come to Germany you will definitely experience racism and I cannot say that you will not experience racism. Just last week it was reported that the German far-right party is planning a mass deportation of non-ethnic Germans, so non-white Germans, uh, if they ever came into power. This is a minority party, they are similar to like Action SA or the VF in South Africa. And although this party does not currently have any significant power in Germany, Germans took this threat very seriously. And since the report was publicized, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Germans across the country have been protesting against racism, against neo-Nazism, and they have been calling for a total ban of this party. This video was taken yesterday afternoon in the city of Hamburg, that's where I live, where over 100,000 people, people as far as the eye can see, shut down the entire city center on a Friday afternoon because they do not want racism in Germany. And as I've already said, these protests have been taking place all over the country since last week because many Germans, millions of Germans are anti-racism. This far right wing party is proof that they are racists, there is racism and there is neo-Nazism in Germany. But the fact that for the last week there have been millions of Germans who have been protesting and calling for a total ban of this party is also proof that there are Germans who are against racists, they are against racism and they are against Nazism. There are black people who have visited Germany or lived in Germany who will tell you that they experience a lot of racism in Germany. Believe them. There are black people who have visited Germany, who have lived in Germany, who will tell you that they have not experienced a lot of racism in Germany. Believe them. Because all we can ever do is to share our truths based on our lived experiences. And that's why if you've watched any of my other videos, I 
always repeatedly say that there is no perfect country. There is only a country that is perfect for you. Because just like we don't experience people the same way, we also do not experience countries the same way. It's like I've lived in America and during my time of studying there, I didn't experience racism. I didn't experience police brutality. But we read about these things all the time in the news. And just because I did not experience it does not mean that it's not a reality. Or with crime in South Africa. Yes, there is crime in South Africa, but I was in South Africa a couple of weeks ago and I did not experience any crime. But that does not mean that there is no crime in South Africa. So I hope this video gives some sort of nuanced perspective to the question of racism in Germany. So let's talk about racism today. I know this is a very sensitive topic and a lot of people shy away from it, but racism has come to stay. Is it getting better? Somehow. And yeah, we have different types of racism. We have also social profiling. We have color prejudice. These are the things we see in our society today. And a lot of people feel it's a sensitive topic. Yes, it is, but we can't keep hiding away from the truth. There is racism in schools where our children go to. There is an Arbeit Platz of the Astraza. Even in shops, there are a lot of times you get to the shop to buy something. And the, and the very embarrassing moment, the security man is behind you, walking around with you the whole ladder, just because you are who you are. You know, leaving all other people that are shopping, just following you. It has happened a lot of times. In schools, what our kids face, Arbeit Platz. And so why should we shy away from it? But I keep telling people, fight for yourself. Don't, I know a lot of people, our emotions are different. We can't react the same way, but then you can't keep allowing people profile you for no reason no they leave the culprit and they walk around you in shops claiming ah they've seen um somebody that they feel in their mind in their little mind because as far as i'm concerned a racist is just someone that's mentally deranged yeah so why would you just look at me and you program your mind that i'm like this I can do this. It doesn't make any sense at all. Did you know that Denmark, a country that markets itself as one of the happiest and greenest countries in the world, actually double penalises some of its citizens just based on where they live and their ethnicity? I'm here with the Collective Against Environmental Racism here in Copenhagen to tell us more about that. Did you know in Denmark there's a law called the Ghetto Law? A law that forced displaces citizens from their neighbourhoods in order to destroy the buildings because they are people of color or as the Danish government call it, non-Western. It's interesting because Denmark often labeled as a green country, as a happy country, but yet destroying perfectly sustainable buildings and housing because there's too many people of color in the neighborhood. Seems very fascist, but also um, very contradictory. So get to love me. Did you know that the Danish government is also selling some of these houses to private owned companies that can then build new non-sustainable apartments that are double the price, sometimes triple the price? To fight this fight, follow these organizations, Elmin, Mustan, Bully Action, and our collective, the Collective Against Environmental Racism. Enforced gentrification and environmental racism all over the world. And make sure you share this video. Things I love about Germany and why you might want to consider Moving to Germany, yes, emphasis on me, my opinion, what I think. Okay, so these are the reasons why I love Germany. Can we just give it up for the roads in Germany? Can we give it up? Can we have a loud applause for the roads in Germany? I have never seen with my bare eyes, with my two eyes, I have never ever seen a pothole anywhere in Germany. And I am not even kidding you. 
the road system in Germany is amazing. Construction altogether in Germany is amazing. The houses, okay, the, 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 they are solidly constructed. The roads, everything that has to do with construction, I give it up for Germany. I have never seen anything that has to do with a pothole. Sometimes I even wonder with the way they reconstruct these roads, I begin to think to these roads, I think like, I think these roads have an expiring date. And before their expiring date, they reconstruct them because, because the roads are steadily every day under reconstruction. And I'm like, that road is still good. What is happening? But I think that is their own style. But I give it up for the roads and constructions going on in Germany. I love them. And I love that Germany is family and child friendly. Yes. So many people might agree. So many people might not agree. But I am strongly of the opinion that Germany is family and child friendly. In every office, in every organization, anywhere that I step into, there is always a small space, a safe small space allocated for children. They are children friendly. That is what I have noticed, okay? And I have never seen children being shushed away for any reason in an office, anywhere, okay? I have never seen that. Germany is child friendly. Germany is family friendly. And in addition to that, Every parent here receives a certain amount for every child that stays here, okay? It doesn't matter if that child is born here, if that child is not born here, as long as that child is legally registered here, as long as that child is legally under registration in this country, every child here receives uh, a certain payment, okay? This is kind of a child care support from the government being uh, um, being allocated to the parents to enable the parents take proper care of that child. And this payment continues up until that child is 18 years old. Then after that, um, they do not receive any more, uh, like the children, the parents do not receive any more uh, child support care from the government. And I think this is very, very nice because this helps a lot of mothers. This helps a lot of parents to be able to provide, uh, you know, for their children here. So, and I love that. And this alone will tell you that Germany is child and family friendly. Germany observes a whole lot of public holidays and that makes me happy. And that makes so many other workers happy. I think that the month of May should be everyone's favorite month in this Germany because in May there are so many public holidays okay so apart from the holidays that you have to take from work you have extra holidays where you get to rest where you get to take some time out for yourself take some time out for the family it depends on what you have to do but I love that they observe all these public holidays that they observe and that makes it even better for families and workers as well a lot of German shops have their own brands. Yes, they have their own brands. And these brands are given even the well-known high-end brands a run for their money. Believe me, their brands are not just cheaper. The quality, the quality is amazing. The quality can honestly be compared to the quality of a high-end brand. And I love that. Shops like DM, shops like Audi, shops like Crossman, shops like Edeka, almost every shop that you know in Germany has its own brand. And these brands, like I said, are cheaper. And not just because they are cheap, you think uh, the products are not nice. Their products most of them are even way better than the bigger brands that you know. And one thing I love in terms of, you know, the shops having their own brands and production that goes on in Germany, I love that the quality is there. And this quality is controlled. There is quality control, a very high standard quality control that goes on in Germany. It's what we call Stefan Baron tests. Products are always tested for their quality, and that is what we call this as Stefan Varang's test. So we have one, they're good. Uh, we have two, good, you know. So when you, most of these products, when you see them, they have this uh, stamp on it, one, two, three. That means good, very good, and uh, it's hard, it's rare for you to come across a German product that is schlesst, that is bad. And I love that because it makes products available for everyone. So it's not just like um, you go into a shop and you cannot buy the high end. You just grab one from one of the shops. OK, I love Balia products, the DM products, because there is honestly no difference 
with this product and the high-end product and i love that it makes it available for everyone and that brings me to my next point in germany i noticed that there is a good balancing class it is very hard for you to come to germany and you tell who is the first who is upper class who is middle class and who is lower class everybody I know, and I know that some people might not agree, but honestly, in my opinion, it makes it comfortable for everyone to live here because you really cannot tell. Okay. Everyone goes, everyone, middle class, high class, upper class, lower class, whatever class. We all use the same trains. We all use the same buses. We all ride the same bicycles. Okay. We all have the main means of transportation. The people that even have money in Germany, you will not even know. They are the ones that go with, uh, go on foot. They're the ones that ride their bicycles. Okay. You might just see extravagant cars once in a while in summer, but really you cannot tell. Someone like you, someone like me could just decide to buy a very big car. And just because you have a car doesn't mean, okay, you are upper class or lower class. Class is balanced here and I love it. You cannot tell. We all eat the same food, okay? In the house where you live, someone, um, that, uh, that is a minolia might just be living upstairs and, you know, the only few ways that you might just know when in, in terms of class, it's, um, what I think and what I found out is in terms of education. Most of the, um, upper class, uh, people, children, citizens and all that tend to, um, attend the uh, the private schools, which you have to pay for, which are more expensive. I think that is where you might just notice um, the class difference. But apart from that, honestly, everyone goes about the activities, you know, normal without you having to be threatened uh, by an upper class citizen and a middle class citizen and all that. I just find everybody wearing the same thing, doing the same thing, you know, living the same life. And it just makes me happy. Another thing that makes me really happy here, okay, is that in Germany, there is a department allocated for every single thing here. There is a department. Everything you see here, everything that goes on here has its own department, has its own organization that handles it. I'm telling you, everything, like what can I not talk about? What can I talk about? Everything. For everything, there is a department, okay? There are people that take care of, like, it's not like a country where customs and health department are mixed together. There is, for everything, for everything, honestly, there is a department allocated to it. And I honestly think that is why the economy is thriving. I think that is why the country is thriving because they are serious with whatever they do. So there is no mix up. There is no confusion. There is a department, an organization that handles everything that goes on here. So what do you like about Germany? Meet me in the comment section. Don't forget to give your girl a follow. Share the video. Let us know what people think. Let us know what people might like. Let us know what people might not like. Okay. If you have any questions, meet me in the comment section. And until my next one, until my part two, stay safe people. So after watching this video and realizing what is at stake for Africans and the people of Europe, I think it's safe if you can conclude this way. Here is what I, I gathered from watching this video. In the recent decades, um, like 19, in the early 1900s to now, the Europeans, in fact, they are the first people who, to tell Africans to go to their country and land there. We had uh, the Senegal uh, method of assimilation. We had people like Leonard, Leopold Seda saying that the first president of Senegal was taken to France to go and learn French. He was taken there to learn. He went there to learn and he came back and he, backs, he, he backstabbed the people of French. And now he became the president. We had many African leaders in Africa, in Kenya, as an example. They were taken to London to go and study law. We had what we called the first Lancaster Conference. It was held in London. So it is these Europeans who put these things into Africa. Now, in the recent decades, in the early 1900s, a significant number of Africans have sought to migrate to Europe, hoping for a better life and improved economic opportunities. This trend has sparkled considerable debate in many African countries and in the entire world, with some arguing that staying in Africa is a better option and staying in Africa is a worse option for them. That is some people, there is division. It is understandable 
why many people might be drawn into the perceived advantages of Europe, it is essential to examine the potential benefits of Africans staying on their continent, contributing to its growth and finding fulfillment at home. That, that is a point you should do. Like, don't ask yourself what your country can do for you. Ask yourself, what can you do for your country? These are the words of a famous uh, American statesman. His name was John F. Kennedy. He said, what can you do for your country before you ask what your country can do for you? Before you complain, Africa this, Africa that, what can you do for Africa? Before you abandon it, in this case as well. Let's have a brief history of this uh, migration of Africans to Europe. The notion that Europe offers a better life than Africa has deep historical roots. During the colonial era, European powers often portrayed Africa as a land of poverty, uh, chaos, and backwardness. They placed themselves in a position of the Messiah complex. They thought that if they were available, they would help Africans, and if they were not available, Africans would perish. That is what um, the Europeans believe. Now, this narrative I'm speaking of was part of the colonial strategy to justify the exploitation of Africa's resources and people. The portrayal of Africa or Europe as a land of opportunity and progress created a, a, pro, a contrast that suggested Africa was inherently inferior. Post-colonial Africa saw many challenges, including political instability, economic crisis, and social unrest. The media often are focused on negative aspects such as poverty, conflict, and diseases, reinforcing stereotypes. This portrayal of Africa has contributed to the belief that the only way to achieve a better life was to leave Africa and go for Europe, where Western media, movies, and advertisement depicted European lifestyle as the epitome of success and happiness, further cementing the idea that migrating to Europe was the ultimate goal for anyone seeking a better life. But is it true? Economic opportunities in Africa are something which is real. You understand? One of the main reasons Africans consider migrating to Europe is the search for a better economic opportunity. However, in Africa, it is a continent rich in resources, untapped markets, and potential for growth. By staying and investing in Africa, Africans can harness these resources to create wealth, job, and many other things they can do to survive. The continent is home to uh, many countries, my own country, Kenya, which is the, one of the fastest growing economies. We have uh, Ethiopia, we have Rwanda, we have South Africa. Yes, we have um, countries such as um, um, Ghana, yes. Now, uh, these countries are making strides, big strides actually, to offer a wide range of opportunities in sectors like technology, agriculture, tourism, and finance. Moreover, the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which came to effect in 2021, promises to create the largest free trade in the world by number of countries, boosting intra-African trade and creating a larger market for goods and services. This presents a unique opportunities for African entrepreneurs and businesses to thrive and expand contributing to the continent's economic development and reducing the allure of migrating to Europe for economic reasons. Africa is a continent with a rich cultural heritage and diverse traditions. Staying in Africa allows individuals to maintain their cultural identity and stay connected to their roots. The sense of belonging and a community found in many African societies provides emotional and psychological support that can be had to find in foreign lands. Moving to Europe often comes with the challenges of cultural assimilation, discrimination, and a sense of alienation, which can impact one's mental health and overall well-being. Furthermore, uh, by staying in Africa, individuals can contribute to preserving and promoting their cultural heritage. They can pass on traditions, languages, and customs to future generations, ensuring that Africa's rich cultural tapestry remains intact. This cultural preservation not only enriches the continent, but also enhances the world's economic uh, diversity. You know, as I told you later on that, uh, before, that 
look for what you can do for your country, not what your country can do for you. At least after you do this, now you can request that. It's the law of uh, nature. You give, you receive. For those who give, they shall be rewarded. Yes. Contributing to nation building is what Africans should do. Instead of running away from Africa and going to somewhere where someone else sweat a lot to build, you should build yours. Africa's future lies in the hands of its people. By choosing to stay in Africa, individuals can actively participate in nation building efforts, contributing to the development and progress of their countries. The continent needs skilled uh, professionals, entrepreneurs, educators, and leaders who are committed to addressing its challenges and unlocking its potential. Staying in Africa allows individuals to be part of the solution working towards creating a better living condition, improving governance, and fostering sustainable development. Brain drain, uh, the immigration of skilled individuals, has been a significant issue for Africa and Africans, depriving the continent of the talent and expertise uh, needed for its development. By staying, skilled Africans can help build robust institutions drive uh, innovation and create a positive impact in their communities. This active participation in nation building can lead to a sense of pride, fulfillment, and a purpose that may be difficult to achieve elsewhere. Migrating to Europe is not without its challenges. There's so much challenges. And some of the challenges you are told, and that which I'm about to tell you, will even reinforce the idea you shouldn't move to Europe. Many African migrants face significant hardship, that's true, including dangerous journeys across the Mediterranean, exploitation by human traffickers, and the risk of being detained and deported. Once in Europe, they often encounter legal and social barriers. Limited job opportunities, discrimination, racism, and xenophobia are common experiences for many African migrants which can lead to social isolation and mental health issues. Economic situation in Europe is not always as rosy as portrayed. Many European countries are grappling with high unemployment rates, economic stagnation, and anti-migrant sentiments. The cost of living in Europe can be high, and the reality of finding a well-paying job may not align with the expectation that many migrants have. This often leads to disappointment and a realization that the dream of a better life in Europe may not be as attainable as initially thought. Let's conclude. You've heard appearance might not be reality. While the allure of migrating to Europe for a better life is understandable, it is crucial to consider the potential benefits of staying in Africa. The continent offers vast opportunities for economic growth cultural fulfillment and a nation building. By staying, Africans can contribute to the development and prosperity of their countries, preserve their cultural heritage, and find a sense of purpose and belonging that might be difficult to achieve elsewhere. The narrative that life in Europe or Germany is inherently better than life in Africa needs to be challenged, and Africans should be encouraged to see the world and potential in staying and building a better future on our continent, Africa. Africa has much more to offer than we think. We know, I, I think we know, but we are just ignorant. We just want to, you know, let's go to Europe by any means possible. By any means possible is actually by any means possible you'll be mistreated in Europe. I think home is the best. East or West, home is always the best. Yeah, I am in my hotel room. It's different from where you are used to seeing me. I had a travel to Diani. I'll be dropping videos uh, very soon. Kindly subscribe to the channel. Support EFK Original Documentaries, which is me. Yeah, I will so much appreciate. Remember, the main aim of this video is to encourage you to stay in Africa. That's the main aim of this video. So see you in the next video where we shall have deep critical analysis. Thank you.